Hi guys, so today we will be working on January 2013, number 4. This is another electrolysis question for you to practice. So the first one, explain why magnesium conducts electricity when solid, but magnesium iodide only conducts electricity when molten or in solution. So this question asks for quite a few number of things. Firstly, um, why it conducts electricity when solid, why magnesium iodide only conducts when molten, and of course you also have to explain why magnesium iodide would not conduct electricity when it is in a solid state. All right, so here now, if you look at this diagram here, this is the magnesium metal, right? Solid magnesium metal at an atomic level. And down here, uh, this would be your magnesium iodide crystal, only the green and red. And here you would see magnesium iodide in solution or aqueous magnesium iodide. All right, so magnesium conducts electricity when solid because it has free or available mobile electrons. So if you look at the diagram here, these electrons here are what facilitates the movement of electricity. Okay, metallic bonding is present in magnesium. Here, the metal has a neat arrangement of positive ions held together in a sea of free-moving electrons. Always remember that metallic bonding has a sea of free-moving electrons. However, magnesium iodide bonding is ionic and the electrons are locked in a crystal lattice. So if you look here, there are no mobile electrons right this magnesium iodide is locked there's no movement however when it is molten or in solution it conducts electricity as the molecule separates into positive cations and negative anions so looking at it here when it is separate the movement of ions is what facilitates the conduction of electricity all right now if it was in the molten state that means there's no water all these little blue molecules you see here represents water if there was no water all you would see is the um, electrons and the sorry the anions and the cations in solution okay so the cations will move towards the cathode so these red cations move towards the cathode and the anions move towards the anode and they will release electrons this will allow the solution or molten magnesium iodide to conduct electricity all right so just bear in mind um, these diagrams here is what will help you to develop your answer for this question Part B, draw a label diagram of apparatus which could be used in the electrolysis of molten magnesium iodide. All right, so for this apparatus, you must have a power source. You must also have connecting wires, which both connect to electrodes, two electrodes. It must be submerged at least three quarters. The electrode must be in, submerged at least three quarters in an electrolyte solution or a molten compound you must also have a switch and a bulb or an ammeter next write equations to indicate the chemical reactions which will occur at each electrode so before you do this you need to understand which ions are present in the solution now when we when um, you see molten magnesium iodide right that means magnesium iodide is in the liquid state and it's going to break up into magnesium cation and the iodide anion all right so the magnesium cation is going to be attracted to the cathode all right so the magnesium cation migrates to the cathode to form magnesium solid 
it must gain two electrons in order to form magnesium solid. At the anode, you have iodide migrating towards it. So the iodide is converted to iodine. How is iodide converted to iodine? You see it's negative here, it must lose the electrons, or as I like to say, it spits out the electrons in order to form iodine gas. Alright, so once iodine gas is being formed, you might see a purple vapor coming out of solution. You must have correct state symbols for this, and it must be balanced in terms of the number of electrons here. A current of 5 amps is passed for 10 minutes through molten magnesium iodide. Calculate the mass of the product that will be formed at the cathode. Alright, so from this um, we need to calculate the mass. Alright, so the mass of a substance produced at an electrode is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passing through the cell. So the quantity of electricity passing through the cell is measured in coulombs or charge right and q as you know q is equal to i t which is current times the time in seconds all right so we are given the current i and we are given t 10 minutes you have to convert it to seconds and it works out to be 3000 coulombs all right so one mole of electrons has a charge of 96,500 coulombs. It's also given here, that is one Faraday. So it takes one mole of electrons, sorry, it takes two moles of electrons to make, two moles of electrons to make one mole of magnesium. All right, so that charge of electrons that is required is two times the Faraday's constant and that will produce one mole of magnesium or 24 grams. So two by 96,500, that's two moles of electrons, that will be equal to 193,000 coulombs. This charge will produce one mole or 24 grams of magnesium. Now what we need to do, we need to find for 3,000 coulombs because this is the charge actually occurring in the cell. All right, so you find for one, you just divide both sides by 193,000 and then you find for 3,000 coulombs. And your end result will be 0.37 grams of magnesium. And we know magnesium is also formed at the cathode. Right, so once you understand this calculation, you should be okay for all of your electrolysis calculations. So just look out for some more in the near future. Okay, all right, so that's it for today. Take care.